up? We are back with Behind the Bikini episode number 60. 60. 60. <laughs> um, like, comment, subscribe. Hit the buttons wherever they are on your device today. Uh, we did not plan that the 60th episode would be right after the 60th Olympia, but it worked out pretty damn well. <laughs> Sure didn't, but hey, it works. <laughs> hey, like kiss Matt, like I said, it was supposed to it was meant to be that way. So um yeah, we are post Olympia. How many days now? Four days, something like that. Four. Three, three four, four. What I don't know. Sunday, Monday, <laughs> Tuesday, Wednesday. Okay. There we go. <laughs> like I don't even still know. Good. I'm like, I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know where I am still, still. So um, today's topic, we're just going to kind of wrap up Olympia and talk about what we're doing going into the the new the new year. We can call it the new year now because we're post-Olympia. So now it's the next season. Um, how are you recovering? That's the first thing. How are you recovering from the weekend? Oh, I'm not. I'm not recovered <laughs> at all. Um, yeah. But I'm looking forward to a vacation here soon because yeah. tomorrow we leave uh, for Tampa. So we're going to go to uh, Hurricane Pro-Am and be working all weekend. And then on Sunday from the show, we leave to head to Europe for two weeks. So I just keep telling Drew, we just keep looking at each other and we're like, yeah, and I'm like a couple weeks, a couple days till vacation. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So what, so tell me how you're going to manage vacation because clearly you're going into reverse diet at this point too. And you know, how are you going to manage that with your clients all that kind of stuff and being on a completely different side of the world, really? You know what I mean? What's, what's yeah. your, what's your plan? Yeah, really good question. So first thing is I haven't taken a vacation since 2019. Mm -hmm. um, so like with my athletes and my clients, it's funny because they notice that I never take a week off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then so when we were kind of trying to decide this year, like how we were going to structure check ins and whatnot. Um, basically what I'm going to do, which I did for the Olympia week, just to kind of see how it would go. I moved everybody up a day. So if they checked in on Monday, they checked in on Sunday and, and vice versa. So it gave me by the end of the week, an extra couple days of, of, you know, free time. So that's what I'm going to do the first week that I'm there, which will allow more opening up for the wedding that I'm attending to out there the first week in Greece. Um, and then the second week I'm going to take off completely. Um, and that's going to kind of be my unplugged time with Drew to connect and, you know, really just be present. Um, I've been guilty in the past of us going on, you know, trips and working, you know, in the pool <laughs> and, yeah. um, you know, that's not good. It's not, it's not good to find that balance. So I sent a message out to all my girls on Monday. Everybody was so cool about it. Like, oh my gosh, we're so happy for you. Yes. Take the time. And so that really gives me peace of mind. Um, yes. And the second part of it is reverse dieting. And obviously that is extremely important to me. So, you know, since I've been back really since after the show, I didn't, I did not go crazy. Um, I had probably my craziest was I had a few drinks, um, mm -hmm. but food wise, it really wasn't that big of a deal. And then Sunday at, um, after the shoot on, or after Olympia on Sunday, I had the shoot with JM and it was an all day type of thing. So I had a makeup call time at 10 AM in the morning. I woke up at 9.30, um, yeah. so I had no time to, like, find food, eat. So when we were at the shoot, like, at 2 o'clock, I ordered Chipotle. And then when we got to the airport, I had, like, a sandwich. And then we got home at 12.30 at night on Monday. So just whatever. So this morning, I woke up. I'm at stage weight. So I'm, I'm dropping weight at this point. Um, I am traveling with Jamie um, to Europe for two weeks, and then we're going to be together at the second half of the trip for our personal trip. So it's going to be super easy to be with her, you know, and kind of, you know, guiding my eating. What she really wants is for me to enjoy the two weeks in Europe. And then when we get back, we're going to basically treat the rest of this off season like I'm still in prep. Um, we're going to try to stay really, really tight. And um, today is going to make a lot of decisions for me, too, because as you guys know, I have the ripped implant. And then so one of my goals was to get that fixed at the end of the year and I do have a consultation with uh, the surgeon that I'm looking at this afternoon so you know talking to him and his timeline and you know recovery and whatnot that's going to guide a lot of my decisions because I'll just be honest with you guys like we are talking about maybe applying for the Arnold um, we're talking about maybe shutting it down for a little bit longer and then coming out a little bit earlier before the Olympia next year so there's obviously lots of you know talk on what to do, but that surgery is number one of, you know, kind of guiding those decisions. So we'll know a lot more about that after this afternoon. 
Wow. So you got, you, you got, you got a lot going on, but you got a plan. So that's good. That's yeah. good. Trying it's to funny. have some sort of plan, you know, plan A, plan B, plan C. <laughs> yeah. Cause it's funny because you mentioned that whole thing about check-ins because everything you just said, I just got a message from Jamie last night and my trainer eyes about that. Like as I was going to bed, yeah, as I was going to bed last night, I was like, Oh, I was like, okay. That's exactly the same thing she said in there, which, yeah. you know, for me, it's not a big deal. I'm still, I'm still in prep, but not a whole lot. Um, you know, as far as changes are concerned at this point, I don't think, um, you know, going through Vegas last week and all that, I actually dropped weight, like you were saying, like through the, through the reversing and all that. Um, right now I'm sitting less than two pounds up from my stage weight in Daytona. So my stage weight in, um, Georgia was two pounds less than that. So I guess you could say I'm, you know, up a total of four pounds, maybe, you know, if, if you want to call it that, I think a lot of it's inflammation from travel. I still don't feel recovered at all. Zero. Um, Vegas was rough. I mean, like just the climate change was rough. And then for me also the time change and all that kind of stuff too. Like I, I was saying this, I was like, I could not keep water in my body. Like I couldn't, like, it was just, it was just crazy how dehydrated I was all weekend long. And like that, you know, that for me, it's like, you don't ever feel like you're getting replenished. You know what I mean? Like, I felt like I was wiped out the whole time. And then when I got home, it was even worse. Cause I took a red eye home. Um, so the first, there's two, two legs of the flight. So the first leg of the flight, the seats didn't recline. So like I would fall asleep, but my head was bobbing every time that I would fall asleep and it would wake me up. Cause I couldn't actually recline the seat. I was like, why? It was an American. It wasn't like, it was like a cheap ass flight. It was American. I was like, they, I was like, why do these seats not recline? And then, so the second flight at same, like the second flight, I was able to sleep a little bit better, but that was only, that was only an hour and 40 minutes was the second flight. So I barely slept. So when I got home on Monday, and I'd stayed up all weekend too, as you know, we just do that. You know what I mean? When I got home on Monday, I was exhausted. I was like, okay, well, I, I'm like, before I even look at my client check-ins, I'm going to lay down for a couple of hours. So I did that. And, um, and then when I got up and did all my client check-ins and then I went back to bed and then I got back up again, did some more work. I was like, I was going to train when I got home. I was like, no. Mm-mm. Yeah, we were we were discussing the same thing because it's like, you know, post Olympia, you like want to get back in the gym. Yeah. And like Drew and I lit, like Drew has not trained in two and a half weeks because he's been so focused on, yeah. you know, training the athletes yeah. in Olympia. He was like, I want to go into the gym on Monday, like smash it. Let's go have fun. And then we both look at each other on Monday morning and we're like, maybe nope. this afternoon. And then we're afternoon, we're like, no, like we just could not get there at nope. all. Like our nope. bodies just like sit. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I, and I trained all weekend while I was in Vegas and I did that on purpose. Cause I had a feeling when I got home, I was going to have a hard time. So like I even trained on Sunday. Um, I had a photo shoot on Sunday too, which I got up at 5.00 AM for the, for the photo shoot on Sunday. So, um, so I was in the same boat. Like everybody, you text me after the, after finals was over, you're like, where are you going? I was like, I'm in bed. <laughs> Yeah. And I was out to like two and then my freaking alarm went off at nine 30. So, you know, by the time you get back to the hotel room, we don't go to bed right away. It takes forever to come down. It's yeah. definitely an Olympia hangover. It's well, and, the, and finals, thing. finals itself lasts until midnight. You know yeah. what I mean? I was still yeah. at that watch party till after midnight, you know what I mean? And, and, um, so then I went, when I went back to my hotel room, I was like, I was, I was, first of all, I was starving. Cause I had still had my last meal. I planned that on purpose, but I, I mean, it was midnight and I was fucking starving. So I, so what I did actually is I ate my last meal and I had an extra protein bar because I was like, when I get up in the morning at five, I'm not going to want to eat, but I don't want to be dead when I go to this photo shoot. So I had extra food at night so that when I got up in the morning, I didn't have to eat and I would still be okay. So yeah, (laughs) so that's what I did. I went to bed and then I got up, like I said, got up at five and and went to the photo shoot. And then when I got back, I was like, well, I got a few hours before I have to actually check out of my hotel room. So I'm going to go ahead and train. They had a decent gym in the, in the actual hotel. Um, so I trained, um, then I got checked out and I just kind of walked around uh, Vegas for us today, hung out with Rihanna for a little while. Um, and you know, just, just kind of putzed around, not nothing crazy or anything like that. And, um, so by the time I got, I didn't even fly out of Vegas until my flight didn't leave till 1154 at night. 
So, <laughs> it's long. and when you're thinking, I'm, I'm East Coast time, so really that's 3, 3 a.m. for me, you know, and I, and I try to stay relatively close to my normal schedule, meaning like I tried to go to bed early because I, I didn't want to be, you know, I'm only in Vegas for three days. I didn't want to be completely knocked out of it when I got home. And I will say that, that my, my body clock since I've been home has been right on. Like I've still been going to sleep at the same time, getting up at the same time. So, um, so I'm glad that I did that. I didn't go too crazy with going out and stuff like that in Vegas. And, um, you know, I spent majority of my time just trying to, trying to relax. Cause again, I was a week post show. So like, it's just not, it's not conducive to going out and partying every night. <laughs> oh or do you God. really still feel like it? Like mentally? No, I, I didn't want to like that. That was the whole thing. It's like, I had, I had a good time. I saw everybody, um, you know, enjoyed the show, all that kind of stuff. But I'm, I'm, I'm old. I'm 43. I'm like, I don't want to go freaking to the clubs and shit. Like that's not my, that's not my jam. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. That's not my thing anymore. <laughs> you know? So I was like, this is the first I said that. I was like, this is the first time I've been to Vegas and I'm not drank anything, like at all. <laughs> no fun. Vegas is a horrible place to be in prep. There's no it microwaves. Really you can't do Vegas. Yeah. Well, I couldn't. So I couldn't believe. So I went to the Resorts World on Sunday and that's where I was hanging out with Rihanna and we went to Starbucks. I could not believe that they were trying to charge $7 for a fucking Americano. I was like, are you kidding me? Like, I'm really glad that I didn't stay at the host hotel because I don't know. I know coffee makers in the rooms, so that's why they do it. They force you. <laughs> oh, see, I stayed off site, which now now that I know that too, I'm very happy about that because I had a coffee maker. So I stayed at the um the Las Vegas Marriott, which was directly between Resorts World and the um the Expo Center, which was perfect. So it's like actually attached to the Expo Center, but the where the Olympia was on the, was on the other end of the Expo Center. So it took me about five minutes to, to walk to the Expo. It took me about 15, 10, 10, 15 minutes to walk to, um, to Resorts World. So it was perfect. Um, and I'm actually not like even more glad that I did that because <laughs> I had a coffee maker in my room. <laughs> like it was great. It was quiet. I had a suite. So like I had plenty of room. I just like, it, it was, it was nice. There was a couple other people staying there. Like I ran into Kai Green twice at the, like, like people that don't want to be bugged by all the tourists and all the people that are there for the Olympia, they stay offsite, you know what I mean? So that they don't get that issue. So, you know, smoke free facility. So I'm not walking through a casino where there's smoke everywhere and stuff like that. So that was, I'm like, okay, I'm going to do that again. <laughs> it's like, I just did it because I had so many points racked up from traveling all year that I got the hotel room for free. So I was like, well, I'd rather do this than spend, you know, 16, 18, $1,800 on the hotel room for three days. And uh, I was like, this worked out really good. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, but then, you know, we went to Fit Club. So the first day I was there, I went to Fit Club by myself. And then um, the second day I went with um, Erica and, and her husband, Gil, they're two of our Fit Body uh, coaches. So we went and um, they closed at eight. So we got there at six. And we shut the place down. Like we were the we were the last ones in the gym. Like even the guy that that ran the gym, he was like, I'm gonna, he's like, I'm gonna leave. You can just shut the door behind you when you leave. We're like, okay, cool. Awesome. Jeez. So so we had fun. Um, I put uh Erica through my workout that Drew had programmed for me. So she was like, I've never felt my glutes feel like this. So I was like, maybe I should be a personal trainer too. <laughs> yeah, add it to the resume. <laughs> I know, right? I was like, no, it was great. It was a good time. We had a, we had a blast. So, um, and then you know, just just Olympia itself. Um, like I said, it was just a weird. It was it was a weird Olympia. Like I didn't feel like normal. Like because usually I do go out and do all those things and stuff like that. I didn't do any of that. I just I went to the shows and I went to bed. So and I went to the gym. That's that's meathead life, right? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, for you being in this kind of odd you know, time off period, I think yeah. it's the perfect place for you, it you was. know, to really stay on track and stay in that fire. Yeah. Um, because I mean, like in 2020, when I got my first qualification, I had like 13 weeks till the Olympia and it was like just enough time to take some time off, but also yeah. not enough time to like, you know, get lean again, like truly, truly lean with how like yeah. tired I was that season. So I get it. Like if, if I was, you know, not going to shows every weekend, like I was then for coaching, I probably would not have made it to that Olympia as yeah. good looking as I did. So yeah. I get that totally. Yeah. And I was just, you know, I'm in, I'm in that point right now where like my body's just sucking up everything that I'm giving it, you know what I mean? So I'm like, I, I couldn't believe like at that photo shoot on Sunday, I couldn't believe how 
tight, like you and my hamstrings look, you know, I was like, holy shit, like I could step on stage right now. You know, it's funny. I did my check-in yesterday with Jamie. I had no clue what I would look like, you know, in the yeah. photos. I knew I felt tight, obviously, because I hadn't been eating or drinking that much. So when I check, took my check-in photos yesterday, I was like, damn. Could have done hurricane. Literally should have done hurricane. So she she messaged me back. She's like, God damn it. We should have done hurricane. Oh, it's so funny. Because I, I was saying the same I thing. I tighter and fuller than I yeah. did on Saturday, which I think is crazy because – I'm really, really happy with the way I looked on Saturday. I don't think yeah. I could have gotten any tighter and fuller, but yeah. I was like, damn. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, that, cool. I think that when you let the stress go, though, too, I think that's how, that's part of it. Yeah. You know, I was totally. saying that in Vegas because I was like, I look better now than I did on stage. And I think a lot of it was not even the prep aspect of it. It's just, it was just letting the stress go and letting the, 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 pressure go of getting on stage. You know, it's like all of a Which is why most like, girls oh, feel okay. like, like look better in finals because yeah. the stress of prejudging is over. So it's oh. like if you could bring that same like stress-free effort attitude to prejudging, yeah. like that is truly like the key to unlocking your best physique. But that is way easier said than done. I yeah. struggle with this like before I'm like, I gotta pose this way. You know what I mean? Like, but if you could just have like the mentality that you come to finals of like, all right, it's done. Like it is what it is. There's nothing more I can do. Like, let's go have fun. Like that's the, the mindset that you yep. need in that morning show. Yep. Well, I think that happened, you know, I did my review of top 15 for uh, bikini last night live. And I think that happened for a lot of the girls that were in the top 15, because I think they just didn't put pressure on themselves to perform. I think the ones that did put pressure on themselves to perform were the ones that didn't look their best. You know what I mean? Like, really? like Alice was a perfect example. You know, I know Alice went into it with just like, oh, I'm just here. I'm excited to be here kind of thing. And then she just ends up in the top 15. You know what I mean? She was like, what, what just happened? I don't even know what happened, you know? And I think that, I think that that has helped a lot of girls, you know, like perform at their best when they're at the Olympia, it just, just letting go and just having fun and enjoying the experience. And, on the flip side of that, the more pressure you put on yourself, the harder it is to perform. Absolutely. You know, in my first Olympia, I forget who, it was somewhere in Drew or Jamie or, you know, one of those circles. They were like, your first Olympia, you have to go in with zero expectation. Yeah. And you just have to go to have fun. Because unless you are totally lights out, more than likely you're you're not getting in that top, you know, two to three call outs, right? Yeah. And that was the case for me. You know, my first Olympia, I went in, I had fun. I got top of the fourth call out. Woo! And that was it. I was <laughs> yeah. happy. I made it to mm -hmm. the Olympia. But every then time that you go to the Olympia and qualify at that point, the pressure becomes higher and higher and higher. And that is what people told me. They were like, enjoy your first Olympia because this is the least amount of pressure you're ever going to have here. And it's true. My second Olympia, I broke the field in half. I got like in that 18 to 20 region from mm -hmm. 40th place. And then this year, my goal was to break it in half again and, and place. I just wanted top 15. I got 12th, which I'm ecstatic with. Yeah. Now the pressure is even higher for next top year 10. to break yeah. it into that top 10, right? So the more you keep showing up, the higher the pressure gets. And it's those girls that are showing up at the lip, but they're like, oh my gosh, I'm just so happy to be, you know, and they are the ones that are posing that carefree, fun personality and yeah. grabbing that judge's attention because they have nothing to lose. Yep. They have literally nothing to lose. So yep. where the other ones are coming in with a little bit more pressure and they kind of look like they're thinking a little bit more, they're a little bit more calculated. And you definitely saw that in this year's Olympia. One of the first things I did when I got to the airport on Sunday night was I pulled up prejudging and I studied prejudging and the call outs and how they move people around. And there was definitely some people that were off that are normally very, very on and yeah. it's, it's pressure and it's normal. It's a human thing, you know, but it's hard. I, it's I mean, difficult. I said that I put it in my Insta stories as I was sitting there watching. Cause I, what I did for those of you that didn't pay attention, I, I, I didn't put the routines up right away because the signal in there was terrible and nothing was uploading. So I was just like, I'm just going to sit here. I'm going to record the routines of the girls when they come out. Like basically the girls that I had predicted in the top 15 or the, or the routines that I recorded. I was like, and then I'm just going to put it all up later and I'll go live during um, comparisons, which worked out great. But immediately, like as soon as people started walking out, I could tell the ones that were on and the ones that were off. And I said that in my Insta stories, I was like, there are some girls here that are really on and some that are really off. And you could literally tell the second they walked out on stage. Maria, Maria Acosta was one. I don't think she expected anything. She was bang on. She was like fucking perfect. He did like, talk to her at the shoot on Sunday and she was like, I was just hoping that I would get, you know, 
a placing. You know, right. We were, yeah. We were all, and I, and you knew too from your prediction. I mean, she was on, on like she looked uh, incredible, you yep. know, definitely. She's definitely going to be a, a top contender for years to come for sure. Yep. Well, and then you look at somebody like, um, like Allie, Allie Bathauser. So she had just come off of Daytona placing sixth, you know, so you would never think that somebody that just did took sixth place at a normal pro show would come in and end up in first caller at the Olympia. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. So, and it's another like, one with fantastic stage presence. Like she yeah. could be a little off that day, but her performance is top of the line, like yep. top of the line, always yep. spot on. So no, and I said it when she walked out, I was like, you know, again, I was sitting next to John with the, you know, cruising the bodybuilding. I was like, oh, damn. I was like, she, she, she looks good. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I wasn't expecting that. You know, like totally. just, I wasn't expecting her to look as good as she looked, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And um, it, it's a, it's it's a it's a crazy thing to to see how stress can affect people differently or lack thereof. Well, you know let's talk I mean? about Ali too. I mean, Ali literally was was fighting getting to Vegas because of the hurricane. Yeah. She was supposed to leave on Wednesday, and her flights kept getting canceled. They had a dog sitter that canceled on them. They ended up having to drive to Miami. Like when I was hearing all of this, because I know Ali well, this this is something I would say to her. You know, she is very reactive to stress and physically mm-hmm. in her body. Mm-hmm. So when I was hearing all this going on, I'm like, oh my god, Ali. You know, like I yeah. I I was you know we were calling Emmett, her husband. Like, what can we do? We need to get you to Vegas, trying to, you know, use our resources. So the fact that she showed up the way she did with literally everything working against her, what a pleasant surprise for her, yeah. you know, like that is such a win. Such Absolutely. A win <laughs> Absolutely. You know, yeah. and, and, and it's just like, you know, and that's why you can't, again, we go back to, we always talk about, you can't let one show affect your next one or whatever, you know, because again, going back to her sixth place in Daytona, Versus yeah. first first call out where, you know, the girls that all beat her in Daytona, none of them were in first call out. Same thing with me and Sasquatch. Yep. Yep. You never so, know. One, it's one show. One, one show. Yeah. One yeah. show, next. One show, next. Yeah. Same goes with the Olympia, too. Just because all of us, you know, get these places at the Olympia doesn't mean next year I could step on stage and one of the girls underneath me can't, you know, leapfrog me that day. That's right. That's Anything right. can happen at any day. Well, that's why, you know, you have new people like this was Allie's first Olympia. This was Maria's first Olympia. And they leapfrogged a bunch of girls that are on that stage over and over and over and over again. You know what I mean? So you really can't, you can't just rest on your laurels and say, well, I got this placing last year so that next year I'm going to get this placing. It's like, no. If anything, it gets harder. Like you just said, the pressure, the pressure gets harder. You know, yep. so yep. pressure is a privilege, but it does. It just keeps getting harder. So. Yeah. But so at, more fun. <laughs> so after watching uh, prejudging, since you watched the, the live after that, was there anything that stuck out to you? Like we talked about the, you know, the um, just how people perform and stuff like that. But was there anything that stuck out to you about like maybe how they judged it or anything like that? How they judged it? Not really. Um, I think it was pretty spot on. Um you know, I, I really do think you can make an argument for that top 10, really top 15 in, in any sort of fashion, you know, yeah. and, and the thing with the Olympia is, remember, we're talking about the best of the best, right? So everybody there has won a pro yeah. show. So really, you're splitting hairs at that point. And there's so many different physiques, especially in the top five. They're yeah. all completely different shapes. Um, I think that could be a little confusing. Yeah, and a little bit hard, but really you have to look at the person individually at that point Correct. and kind of see between the top five how they kind of blend together and find those similarities on fullness and shape, etc. Um, but I'm happy. I'm 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 happy with the judging. I'm happy with the placings. Um, really happy for Laura Lee. Obviously, she's been lock- knocking on that door for an extremely long time. Um, she was at the shoot on Sunday. This was the first time I've really interacted with her personally, and it was awesome. And yeah. you know, I know that she's a great uh, ambassador for the sport. She is super kind, super loving. So I'm really happy with that. You know, I've been very clear that was really important to me that we have a Miss Bikini Olympia that's still 
shows up and gives back to the community. And I think Laura Lee does a good job at that. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm happy. I'm really, really happy. Good. I think, like we say every year, I think next year will be very interesting, you know, when mm -hmm. we start seeing kind of, you know, Jen and Maureen and, you know, come back and how that will once again shake up the top five. I think that if they were involved, it might have changed some things. Agreed. But obviously, you know, that's not to take away anything of what happened on Saturday. That's just to, you know, always keep that in the back of the mind that these girls are not done competing. So next year we right. have to look at what the, you know, that, that standard is going to be. So. Right. Which is why we just keep showing up because the sport is always throwing wrenches and things. So right, right, right. It interesting. <laughs> yep. Well, we know. So, did have you? Maybe you know better. But did is, is Jen coming back next year? Do we know that? I mean, we don't know that for sure. But yeah, I, I didn't get the vibe. I guess that she was retiring. Yeah, she didn't say done. she was retiring. So yeah. I'm curious to see if she decides to come back. I mentioned that last night. I know that um, Maureen plans to come back. You know, for sure. She's even going to compete during the year. She mentioned that. Um, which I don't, I don't blame her. I'm like, she's put in her entire prep in the last two weeks for it to be messed up because of the, because of the injury that sucks. You know, I would never want that to happen. Um, so I understand why she wants to come back as quickly as she can to compete. Yeah, she wants redemption. Yeah. 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 Um, and what a weird way to get an injury, like literally I know. on her road an to accident, the Olympia. like a freak accident. Yeah. You know? And that's, that's the thing. Like when all these girls, we were hearing that they were dropping out. Like my first thing is like, I hope they're okay. Like we yeah. knew Jen was okay after a little bit, but remember we talked to her. I'm like, I just hope she's okay. You know? And yeah. That everything's was, all right. Yep. It was, she was not okay. She yeah. had an accident and you know, a hairline fracture. That's really serious. I can only imagine doing cardio and glutes on a hairline fracture. It already is painful enough as it yeah. is. Well, and your body's so. already already depleted you're already hurting all of that like I, i'm still like i said i'm still hurting right now just from from vegas you know well, like you have to too with <laughs> the lack of nutrients that you have yeah. when you're depleting you're you're, you're not going to have your best shot at that's healing, right you know that's so right. like with the lack of food she's probably has been putting off healing for some time you know right. so right. it's oh, such such a tough yeah thing. I, I, my heart goes out to her I hope she recovers fast absolutely so hey she, she needs to get on a peptide cycle right like, <laughs> <laughs> like oh, we'll that tb 500 bp right no i've yeah. heard so many crazy things like you know just the decrease in time it takes to recover just getting on a good routine with these peptides and stuff i've seen so many i've seen a lot of guys talk about it not a lot of women i've seen a lot of guys on, on like instagram and youtube talk about how these peptides have really helped them recover from injuries and stuff like that a whole lot faster and a whole lot better and everything too so oh yeah yeah so i'm sure she's i'm sure she's she's dipping into some of those resources for sure you know hopefully <laughs> they're there right? I, yeah right um, yeah um all right, you guys, we are almost two weeks out from my show, so I have my skin prep ready from Liquid Sunrays. They've sent me my kit. Um, you have your exfoliating body towel. This is going to make your skin nice and smooth, um, not too rough on the exfoliating. pH balancing body wash, which is super, super important. You wanna make sure that your skin is pH balanced so it's going to absorb your tan perfectly. This is your charcoal sugar scrub which is the bomb this is my favorite product that liquid sunrays has right here and something about this it just makes that tan really soak in deep and then last but not least we have our liquid sunrays body lotion which you're going to put on every single time you get out of the shower and that's just going to put your skin into really good condition when it goes to actually get sprayed for the tan so we're starting this today and uh, making my skin perfect for that tan as we get into the competition season um, I was going to mention something about the whole Laura Lee situation too, because I know she gets a bad rap on social media sometimes, um, you know, people just don't really know her and they go off of gossip and all that kind of stuff. Um, Laura Lee is one of those people that if you've ever met her in person, she makes you feel like you're special, right? Like she'll, she remembers you. She remembers your conversations. She remembers the interactions that she's had with you. She remembers everything that's gone down and she makes you feel like you guys are best friends. You know what I mean? And I, I'm like, I don't, I don't, there's, there's not a whole lot of people in the industry that are like that. And she absolutely is. So I think she gets a bad rap sometimes. Um, and it's not deserved. You know, um, I think I think that people too have to realize, and I'm not making an excuse. This is just coming from an athlete that probably understands where she's coming from too. Like 
when we're that depleted, we are not on all the time. Yeah. And the interactions that sometimes I have with someone that, you know, stops me in a hallway and I'm already running 10 minutes, you know, and that could mean that I'm maybe feeling a little bit rushed or off. And then you take that and then that's what they run with it, that that's your personality, which of course they will. That's a yeah. first impression, right? Uh -huh. Which is why when you're at this caliber, when I'm walking through resorts world and there's all kinds of smoke and yeah um, there was a bunch of college students that were just yeah. standing in the hallways 24 like by the time i reach anyone that i know i'm you know i'm stressed and anxious uh -huh. and trite and you know not my cool calm collected self so you know when you run into your favorite athlete they might be having a bad moment yeah. or a bad day just like you do we all do and that's not them or their personality especially in the gym <laughs> you know, like when I'm in the gym, I look like, do not come and talk to me because yeah. I'm working. I am working at that point. But if my headphones are off, then it's a completely different scenario, you know? So, and I know Laura Lee is a person like me where we train very hard. We're not mm -hmm. doing these 12 pound dumbbells for 12 to 15 reps and not trying to build muscle. Yep. We're there to work. So yep. You know, just remember that and your first impressions of people, like I said, not making an excuse. You know, we should be nice and on all the time, but we're not. We're human. <laughs> yeah. Well, I get and for me, like I kind of get the opposite of that. Like people tell me all the time when they meet me in person, like, oh, you're super nice. I'm like, I, I thought I, yeah. I thought I was. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't know. I am. <laughs> I'm like, I, I, I am like, I guess because I come off because I'm so direct and you're I'm direct so forward. And you're intimidating. You're a boss. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I swear I'm not mean. I promise. No. I'm a very nice person. But and before I, I knew you all too, the I felt the same. Like, oh my god, like she, you're just a presence. You know, yeah, when people say yeah. the same thing about me too. Like, you're yeah. just a presence, and it's it's a good thing. But yeah. people, you know, don't read it the right way. But once they yeah. get to like, once I talk, I'm like, oh. Speaking of, so I have to give him a shout out. So again, so John with, with a. a the cruise of the bodybuilding world. He got me this as a, as a little uh, prize gift or whatever at the Olympia. And uh, he's like, I just have to say, he's like, you're so nice in person. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like I'm, thank you. This is year three. I still haven't met John in person. John, <laughs> That's right. Cause he mentioned that during pre judging. He's like, I hope I get a chance to meet Jordan. I couldn't find her at the, the meet and greet. He couldn't find you at the meet and greet. So, which is, I was in should, the corner. I know. I know. I well, I heard, <laughs> yeah, I heard that a lot. Like, people are having a hard time finding people just in general at the meet and greet. That was, yeah, mm -hmm. that was a little. <laughs> <second>. Yeah. <laughs> there was no signs this no. year. There was one sign when you walked in and the text was this big and you're like, oh, let me find my favorite Olympian. But there was no signs of like bikinis over here. And there yeah. was expediters last year where like yeah. they had like 10 people up in the front. They were like, who are you looking for? Who's your favorite athlete? And they would take you to your athlete. Like, it was not nothing like that this year. It was just like one big. And I was literally yeah. in a, a, a separate room in the corner of the room. <laughs> yep. Yep. Because there was the same thing. I There was a lot of people I missed. Yeah. And I walked around that thing four or five times and I missed people. And I it was, was like, huge. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> it was All right. We'll draw it next year. <laughs> I know, right? It was freaking cold in there, too. I was like, what is up with this freaking air air conditioning it was so I was cold right under the ac and like all of my my stuff on my table kept getting blown away i'm like <laughs> i'm gonna get blown away at this point like <laughs> it was so cold i was like what is going on and the desert air is freaking hot as balls and then it's freaking cold as hell in here because of freaking AC. well when i heard it because that portion of it was in the tent like it was yeah. a, it was a, a very yeah. nice tent but i'm thinking yeah. in the back of my mind oh my gosh we're in you know the official track suit that jacket that they gave us here was gorgeous but super heavy and i'm thinking like oh my gosh it's gonna be hot in there yeah. no it was anything it was but crazy. it was blasting in there yeah. <laughs> yeah i was like all right whatever and i will say this too so i was talking to people about meet and greet i like how they set it up however I'm not a huge fan of like the blasting music and stuff too, because again, I'm, I'm old, but whatever. Um, but I want to be able to talk to people, That's you know, the point. That's yeah. the point. I, yeah. I totally agree with that. It makes it very distracting. Yeah. And when you leave there, it's like you leave a concert, you know, and it's like, <sighs> but you still have like that ringing in your ears. Plus also don't forget that some of those athletes compete the next morning. The next morning. morning. Yeah, so it's so stimulating for them. Yep. By the time they leave the meet and greet at nine nine thirty at night, they get back to their room. They have to come down. It's a lot. 
It is. And I was like, you know, I was saying, I was like at the Arnold, they don't do that. Like the Arnold, it's a room where it's, you know, you can go talk to people, you know, I'm able to interview people and stuff at the Arnold because of that fact. I can't, I can't even attempt to do that at the Olympia. I can't even attempt. So I was like, I'm trying to make it a party. But if that's, if that's the scenario, then just invite the VIPs and the Olympians for like a mingle versus like everybody having a table, like this really structured thing. 100%. I agree with that a hundred percent. Yep. So pick, it's, it's just a pick a lane kind of thing. You Correct. Know? Yeah. What vibe? I feel, What's the vibe? Yeah. 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 Like I feel like I don't have a problem with the, with the, the lighting and all that kind of stuff. It's just the music more than anything else. It's just too much. You yeah, know, I just agree. have, just have some elevator music in the background. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. I mean, it's Vegas. You don't have some, have a lounge singer. You know what I mean? Like oh, that'd, that'd be cool. cool. That would be you really know, cool. something. Something like that would be very simple, very simple and keep the vibe, you know, keep it a cool vibe. Be cheaper still, too. Yeah. You can still, at least you can still talk to people. You know what I mean? So I and left, I, I left I there with no voice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, this is the first day. <laughs> like, I wonder if it was the same DJ that was doing prejudging. I don't know, but. They got, they got some issues, but they got, yeah, yeah, they got, <laughs> well, well, yeah, they got, they got, they got uh, rammed in social media. Basically, yeah, it was bad. It was not good. Okay. Well, good thing Bikini doesn't pick their music, or else that would have been, yeah. There was a lot of technical issues. There was a lot of technical issues over the weekend. Um, so yeah, we won't we won't dive into that too much. But that 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 shit should be on lock, man. Like it should be. Like it just should be. That that shouldn't be. That shouldn't even be an issue. They should have right. done several run throughs, dress rehearsals, all those kinds of things. You have a plan A, B, C, D. So that way, there's none of those issues. Yeah, especially with the men's bodybuilding, because I heard that's where things were going wrong, and they well, that's fitness their routines music. too. Yeah. Fitness routines too. The fitness routines were all their their music was messed up. Mm-hmm. Oh. That's terrible. Okay. Well, we could talk about that. <laughs> yep. Yep. It was not, you know, and, and for fans too, like, I'll just say this much, like a couple of the people that their, their music was messed up with, they're some of the best posers in the business. So right. like Brian Ansley, his, his music was messed up. Andrew Jack, his music was messed up. It's like, come on, they're, they're like the best posers on stage. Yeah. And then the crowd loses that. Their fans lose Yeah. That. Yeah. Uh, at the moment they work for all year. All you know, year. A routine together to that piece of music. Yeah. And it throws off the entire aura of the 100%. presentation. Yeah. People are like, well, you're a pro. You should be able to, you know, post any kind of music. No, like these guys are like moving at a certain beat and, you know, it's. They have it's, it choreographed. It's like, right. right. Yeah. It's like, that's, that's not just to go out there and hit your routine like us bikini girls do. No. We don't, we don't, we can do it to any song. We don't even right. need a beat. You know what I mean? Right. It's that they have actual routines planned that they right. have choreographed and practiced for months. Right. It's like, that's not, that's not okay. That's not okay. Yeah. You know, like that should have been, that should have been fixed. So I don't know. And I, and I haven't, I don't know if they came out and said anything officially or anything like that, apologized or anything like that, but they should, they should. Not that, not that I've seen, but yes, yeah. they should. Yeah. If if not publicly, yeah. privately. Yeah. Speaking of, everybody needs to come out and apologize to Samson's wife because she did a freaking hell of a job. Because she got so much shit leading into the, the Olympia because she was um, coaching Samson, and he she coached him to a, a freaking Olympia win. Not only a, an Olympia win, but he beat two Olympia winners. Yeah. Yeah. And the uh, press conference that they did two days before the show when he took his shirt off and he yeah. wasn't peaked yet. And everybody's yeah. like, oh, and I'm like, yeah. a lot can happen with men's bodybuilding in 48 hours. Yeah. A lot can happen. And well, even that, because he, he, he did, he did the France show two weeks ago as well. And everybody's like, he looked like shit. There's no way he's going to win the Olympia. Da, 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 da. Okay. He came, he came out. And I was like, shit like it was and he is such a tall human so you naturally your eye goes to him but sean i know you can appreciate this it could either be really good or really bad at that point like you have to be so on when you're that tall and it was impressive i mean last year's olympia winner got third place you know so it's you and and i honestly think that derek did improve from last year Mm -hmm. it's just well, I enough. heard yeah. I heard one take on on Derek that I thought was very interesting. I'll say a couple things about Derek too. So people forget, you know, he came from the two twelve, and 
this is kind of Derek's calling card, meaning like one year he'll be like really, really fucking good. And the next year he sucks. Like that, that, that's just what he did like every year in the 212. So it's kind of like what he's doing here in the, in the open. But I think what's happening um, more so than anything else is that he had a shock factor, a shock value factor his first couple of years coming into the open. And that shock factor has worn off. Everybody knows what he looks like now. So now it's not a, oh, wow, this 212 guy is now in the open. It's now a, okay, he's a Mr. Olympia. He's got a, he's got a pony up. Got to show Mr. up. Olympia, right? Yeah. So I think now they're really scrutinizing him more. You know, I think they're looking at his weaknesses more because they're like, he's not just a, a phenomenon anymore. He's, he belongs more, here. We got the more you success know. you have, the more success mm-hmm. you have. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we were, uh, we went on Wednesday to a gym out in Vegas thinking it was going to be the quiet gym, but it wasn't. Seabum was yeah. there. Andrew Jack was there. Franciello was there. Derek ended up showing up when Seabum was done to train. Like, and <laughs> like, it was a lot. Um, yeah. But I was literally doing both of us, me and Andrew Jack were sitting next to each other doing a dumbbell shoulder press. This dude, Dude is freaking massive. They are massive. And then Derek was off to the side and wasn't, you know, as big of a presence, you know. But I just, I love Derek. I love Derek as a yeah. human. So, you know, honestly, these are the seasons that make you turn inward and give you that dog like personality. So, mm-hmm. you know, we'll see what No, I mean, this is, you know, this is what happened to him coming from the 212 up into the open. I mean, that's, yeah. that's what he did. You know what I mean? He, he dug in and, you know, failures do one of two things. Either they make you quit or they make you dig in harder. It's one of the two. There's no in between. So, um, so I'm sure he's going to come back roaring this coming year. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, I, I, I love when stories work out the way they did though this weekend, because everybody predicted Samson to be in third, you know, everybody predicted him to be behind Hottie and Derek. The, the, the conversation was who's going to win between Hottie and Derek because they're two Mr. Olympia's coming back at it again. So I think, I think that probably fueled Samson more than anything else and said, well, no, I'm going to come in and beat both of them. <laughs> Just screw totally. both of you. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> you know? going back to see what you said, you know, Samson's wife coaches him. Yeah. So like mm-hmm. super kudos to her. I'm sure yeah. there was a lots of lip about that. You know, yeah. she's fucking boss bitch. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. And then you also look Keon, you know, his girlfriend yeah. is a, a figure and a physique pro. She turned pro in two different divisions at the nationals that she did. I remember it like it was yesterday. She's amazing. Yep. She is yep. an incredible trainer, incredible yeah. trainer out in Vegas. And she trains him. And yep. I, I think he's coached by P tour. I, f- I forget what his. Yeah. 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 Somebody mentioned that. Cause I didn't know who his coach was, but now I know, now I know he's got to, yeah. yeah, you're right. But yep. she's mm-hmm. with him, you know, 24 seven yep. training him, et cetera. Like another, you know, female helping a, top male bodybuilder like mm-hmm. so incredible so you know and, cool. and i was saying this too i'm like you've got to give these guys some credit too for them being able to kind of take that step back and allow their women to lead you know no kidding like, that's that's a hard thing for a lot of guys to do it's a really hard thing for a lot of guys to do that is both of those men then you can totally say are like not ego driven that's right all. like they just yeah. want to be better and for whatever reason they see within their partner that's the person to take them there and mm-hmm. that's full you know laying it all out there laying yeah. it all on the line yeah well it shows it shows an immense amount of trust and an immense amount of security you know like i like most men are I hate to say it, especially in our industry, incredibly insecure, yeah. incredibly insecure. And uh, the fact that they're secure enough in their, in themselves and in their relationship and in their, their wives and fiancés and stuff like that to know that they've got their best interest at heart. This is a lot about them too. Totally. Totally. And imagine yeah. the noise, right? We're in a sport so full of noise of what people would be saying, like, are you sure? Is that the right yeah. person for you? Maybe you should do this. And for them to be secure in that decision. And just like you said, full trust in their partner. Like, you know, to me, that's the ultimate blend of just like ultimate trust of like your hobby yeah. and something you're so passionate about. And then the love of your life, you know, and mm-hmm. like having that relationship and being able to handle that relationship, you know, yep. Drew and I could not handle that relationship whatever you want to call that. Are we not mature enough for that? Are we not, uh, you know, are we not willing to drop our ego to be, but we're not, you know, so it takes a really special relationship in order to be able to do that. Yep. No, I've said that a thousand times. Dan always jokes that he could train me. I said, no, you couldn't. I was like, I'd kill you. (laughs) I'd 
kill you. And that's, you know, and that's the thing. Like, it drew two years ago, he would tell me something and be like, fuck you. Right. Yeah. Now he tells mm-hmm. me, and I'm like, yeah. you know, I might get trite, but then I'm thinking about, yeah, he's right. I need to do. So, so that's yeah, growth, yeah. right? Maybe another yeah. two or three years, I would, you know, do full sacrifice, but. No, yeah. totally not. Well, you, you got to understand people's strengths too. Like a good example, my husband and I did prep together. We did a show together um, and I did his posing. I did his posing. I did his tan. I did his, his makeup. I did all that stuff for the show, right? Which yes, I do men's makeup too. We had this whole conversation at finals at the watch party. I do men's makeup too. Um, and he completely trusted me with all of that stuff. Now, if I was doing his training and his diet, probably not. Right. Probably not. Like he always, we, we fight about stuff like that all the time because I have completely different philosophies than he does when it comes to training and nutrition. Like we are literally opposite sides of the spectrum when it comes to that stuff. So I don't think he would trust me with that kind of stuff, which is fine because we're, we have very different ideas about it. But he knows where I, my strengths are and he knows where his weaknesses are. And he, he listened to everything I told him to do, you know? So, yeah. 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 No, but that was really incredible. I'm glad you brought that up. C- yeah. Congratulations yeah. to them. That's... yeah. Huge. Yep. So cool. And I hope I hope it comes back around because like I said, like the only person that I've really seen give Marlena credit is Samson. You know, now some of these news outlets are coming out and saying stuff like they need, you know, everybody owes Marlena a, a, an apology and all that kind of stuff. Because they do. I mean, she's the first female to ever coach a male open bodybuilder to a championship at the Olympia. Yeah, literally. I mean, Sam Samson and Fuad. Fuad believes yeah. in them too, you yeah. know. Um, mm-hmm. but it's yeah, I can only imagine, like I said, the noise that was being created there. And now finally he could put a cork in it and then right. shut them all up. <laughs> yep. Well, you know, because I listened to, and the other thing too that I, I have a lot of respect for Milos in this regard too, because Milos was Samson's ex-coach, right? And um, he still to this day just talks nonstop glowing things about about Samson. I hear it all the time. Like he he's said it from the get-go, he is a future Mr. Olympia. And even when, even when he decided to be coached by his wife, Milos still said he is a future Mr. Olympia. You know what I mean? And, you know, he's, he said it, he's like, you know, there's been several shows where she's been with him physically and I've not been there as his coach. And so it makes sense why he feels like this would be a better move for him. You know what I mean? So you got to hand it to the, the, the coaching relationship there too. You know, when people are able to set their own egos and their own agendas aside to see the betterment of somebody else, that's a really, that's a, that's a strong move in, in everybody's, corner. So I, I, I appreciate that kind of thing. Definitely. And you know, and this is going to be the time of year probably where you're going to start to see some of your favorite athletes, maybe making some different decisions, yeah. switching coaches. And, you know, I want to, you know, put it out there that remember, you never know everything. You That's never right. know what happened or how the peak went or how the prep went or how that right. Went. You know, so try not to make any kind of judgment calls and things like that. You know, sometimes an athlete just needs to move on because they just feel like they need something different. And nothing happened. They just yeah. want something different, something you different. know, they so try something different. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So now yeah. between now and the first of the year, you're going to be seeing probably several people shifting yeah. and moving coaches. And, you know, honestly, you can kind of see that people leave a top coach and go to another and they do better. Good for mm-hmm. them. That means they made a good decision for themselves. Right. You know, at the end of the day. Of course, we all have very personal relationships with each other. This is a sport where you have to create a relationship with the people that you're working with in order to have that full trust and that sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Um, However, you know, that can make it really, really hard when you know that you need to leave. But at the end of the day, business is business. You know, the the relationship between you and your coach on a coaching level is business. And if you realize that it's not working for you anymore, you need something different, you have to be able to have that right as a human to choose the best option for you. And everyone should have that flexibility without judgment yes and then and when that relationship ends too the hope is always that you can still be personable towards each other you know um i've said this before i've had several coaches in my whole coaching my whole time in this in this industry and there is one ex-coach that i can actually have a conversation with now and that's Kim Odo. I think everybody loves Kim, but like, I love Kim. Though, yeah, I'm like, even though we're, he doesn't coach me anymore, every time I see him, big hugs and how you doing? And you know, how's everything going? Blah, 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 blah. Can always do that with him. He's the only one that I can yeah. do that with. Yeah. And again, it goes back to, you know, the ego thing. Like it doesn't, it doesn't matter. You know, yeah. Yeah, I'm not a top coach, but if I was in that position, like, it doesn't matter if you're not with me, with me, like, I'm still seeing you backstage at the end of the day. Yeah. I want to support you and cheer you on versus having that 
you know, and I think this type of, you know, fight and relationship, you could totally see it like with the girls backstage too. Like that's so much harder than just like waving, saying hi and saying good luck. It's yeah. so much harder to produce that emotion and that emotional stress. And, you know, I, with my first coach left, I hoped that we could have created a relationship, but to them, they couldn't handle it. So unfortunately we're not friends anymore. And, and I think that actually happens a lot of the time and I hate yeah. that. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there because I know that shift is about to, to start happening. It always does. It always, it always does. does. Yeah. It's not, it's not just the, not just the Olympia as a catalyst. It's like, it's the change the of the season. seasons. Yeah. You know, it's a change of the seasons. And this is not just in our, our season. I see it too. And just in business in general, I think a lot of people, when we go in out of the summertime and into like fall and winter, people start changing yeah. and they have different things that they want to do. I, you know, the, the, I've said it before, you know, feel energy shifts and things like that. Like I said to myself this past weekend at the Olympia, I took time to myself and I typically don't do that when I'm at the Olympia. Typically it's go, 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 go. And I, I felt guilty about taking time to myself. I felt bad about that. I was like, that's not okay. Like you were talking about with it, with going on vacation. Like it's okay to go on vacation and, and be, just be there. You know what I mean? And I was just like, I, I like, that's not You okay. even saying that, I'm like, no, it's not. You know what I mean? But yeah. that's the pressure we put on ourselves. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. So, you know, sometimes we really need to sit back and like check our priorities and that's, and that's where changes start. That's where changes begin. That's where, that's where we start making decisions from, from, you know, an, a, not an emotional place anymore, but more of a, okay, this is the, this is where I am and this is what needs to change. And this was, this is what needs to go forward, you yeah, know? Totally. So, totally. I mean, you can take that back to, um, you know, Seabom and uh, Sid Gillen both retiring, you know, like I, they made the, those decisions long before they ever got to the Olympia. Yeah. They just decided to announce it then, you know? Right. Yeah. This was not an emotional decision. This was very calculated. You know, Seabom came out. And he said that he almost pulled out last year, but he knew it was going to be an emotional decision. And if you guys right. remember, Seabum in his his uh, celebratory speech last year talked about feeling everything because mm -hmm. of how hard the prep was emotionally and physically for him. And he didn't want to end on that note or end it in that emotion. He wanted to know that this was the decision that he actually wanted made with no emotion you know, attached to it. And Thank God he did one more year. He's ending on the high note. Um, you know, he did an Olympia with his, you know, child present, which is something he'll never forget. Um, and then he's announcing he's still going to be involved in the Olympia, you know, in yeah. some sort of way, shape or form. You know, he left a legacy. He left the standard. Same thing with Sid. I mean, there's not going to be many that come behind her and do what she did. I mean, yeah. she is absolutely incredible. They will never be a physique like hers on the stage. Yeah. Um, so it's sad. It's the end of two really big eras in bodybuilding. Yep. Um, yeah, I, my heart was like, oh no, I was at finals and doing I'm like, no, I was expecting it, but no. I know. I, I think, I think everybody was expecting a bum. I think everybody yep. was expecting it. Sid, I wasn't. Sid, I thought she was going to go for 10. I wasn't expecting Sid. No, yeah. but I, just like you, I didn't think she was going to end on nine. I knew it would yeah. be like an even. So if it wasn't eight, it, it was, was, it was eight, wasn't it? It was eight. This year. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, so I didn't, if it wasn't going to be this year, it wouldn't be next year. Oh, I get what so you're it saying. It was either okay, going to be okay, ending okay. on eight or ending on 10. You know what I mean? I see. I thought she was going to keep going. Cause I thought she wanted to like go pa surpass like Iris Kyle. The, the, yeah the record, which she could have hundred percent. Maybe tired. I mean, something about Sid too, is I know this, like her coach is out in Arizona. And so yeah. is her, is her body work person. So like yeah. three mm -hmm. months or something out from the Olympia, she moves out here so that okay. she can train with her coach and be with her body work person 24 seven, like three months out of the year, not living in your home and, you know, really prepping for the biggest stage of your life. Like that's a lot. So well, she's, you I mean, know, she's married now and all that. And she's right. getting into, she's in her, she's in her thirties now at this point, I believe. Um, so it's like, you know, you got to start thinking about, do you want to have a family, Life. you know, and, you know, you, we know, like you, you've talked about this with, with your period and stuff like that being gone. Like if you're thinking about potentially having a family, it's not like you can just get off stage and go get pregnant. That's not how that works. Sometimes yeah. it takes it's a take few a while years. To be yeah. Which by the way, mine has not come this month. So I think I'm officially, I think I'm officially you're pregnant. Enough. No, <laughs> no, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> no god no <laughs> please god no um but um no <laughs> but like i was yeah 
So like I was saying last month, I barely got it at all. It was still there, but I barely got it. Now I'm like six days late and it's, you know, it's funny. Enough. It's like, it's like you're leaner now than you were when you were competing a few weeks ago. So you're I know. like, yeah. Yeah. So like, cause it was, I was two weeks out when I was supposed to get it last time. And I, like I said, I got like a dribble and that's it. And then this week I was supposed to get it while I was at the Olympia and I didn't get it. So get it. I, yeah. And, I'm, and like I said, I'm right now. And it's just cause I have inflammation on me. I did glutes yesterday. I'm going back to cool toning. I went to cool toning yesterday. So I basically had two glute workouts yesterday. So I'm holding a lot of, of inflammation. So I'm up just almost two pounds over stage weight, but two pounds, you know? So like, I, that's nothing, you know? That's a thing. That's so good. it's like, I, I, I think I'm at that point and it's, you know, the crazy part about it is that I don't feel, I don't feel depleted. That's good. You know, like I, I the am. the point right now, right? Yeah. The point is to give you a little bit more food and get you feeling a little bit fresh and a little bit fuller and then cut you down yeah. a little bit. And like, I, I am, I'm depleted. Don't get me wrong. I can see it. You know what I mean? And like I said, I'm having a hard time with recovery, but like in general, I don't feel like death. Like I haven't, you know, passed preps. Like I feel like I could maintain this, you know good. what I mean? Um, I, I don't want to maintain it for past December, but <laughs> I, feel, I feel like I could, you know, which totally. is cool. Like, I don't, I don't think I've ever had that coming out of a prep before, you know, like That's awesome. even, even when I did that shoot on Sunday, you know, Brian hit me up on Friday when I was there. He said, you want to shoot on Sunday morning? I said, sure. And I was thinking in my head, I was like, if I could hold on to my physique through the weekend, that's what I was thinking. Because typically that's what happens when I come out of a show. It's like, it's really hard for me to hold that physique. Um, but this time it's not been hard at all. And I've been eating a lot like, like, sh like this coming out of this prep. So to go into the reverse aspect of it, like the goal is to put on a little bit more density, but by December. So as soon as I came out of Georgia, um, Jamie fed me more, like I'm up to, you know, 200 grams of carbs a day, whatever it is. My, my calories are close to me too. 000. Yeah. Yeah. My calories are close to 2000 calories a day. Plus I've had a little treat here, a little treat there, that kind of thing. Not even gonna lie. And I'm going to tell her to, too, when I check in tomorrow, I was like, when I was at the expo, I was trying protein bars. So I probably had a total of an extra, like two or three protein bars throughout the weekend. So it's not like I went crazy. But yeah. still, it's over my macros regardless. It's over my macros. So even with that, I mean, I, like I said, two pounds up, you know. That's awesome. And it's like, so I just feel like my body. And again, I don't, I've never come out of a show with this kind of um, conditioning. Like I really just like the last two years and plan to do another show in a couple of months. Right. Yeah. So I've yeah, never whole really, new experience. Yeah. I've never really had that. I guess that drive to stay on track either. You know what I mean? Like I'm not thinking, Oh, well I'm in off season so I can go have a cheat meal. Like that's not what I'm thinking. You know, I'm thinking I'm just going to stay on my plan. That's kind of where I'm at mentally too. Yeah. Like, you know, it's, I just want to keep prepping. Like my, yeah. I'm mentally still ready to keep prepping. So yeah. like, I'm not food focused at all. I went right back to my macros. I'm satisfied at my macros. You know, could I go eat sushi tonight if I wanted to? Yeah. But yeah, I'm not, I don't, I'm not there, you know, and that's the thing yeah. is the more that we do it, the easier it gets. You know, I had so many messages in my inbox. Oh my gosh, you're going to Europe for teaching. Well, what are you going to do? How are you? And it's like, I would have freaked out three weeks ago going yeah. on a Europe trip for two weeks and being in a reverse diet, but I'm, I'm not, I'm just yeah. in a completely different place mentally with food. Cool. I want to grab a croissant and then walk, you know, another 10, you know, thousand steps and go, from, you know, I will, you know, yep. but it, I'm not going to binge that's the, the the change and i don't think a lot of people really understand what binging is they tell themselves the story of like well you know i'm not in prep anymore so i can't go have sushi tonight but i'm not in prep anymore so i can't have a bite of this and they they underestimate the amount that they start to take in you know yep so if you can stay tight when you're home and when you're con you know control your controllables and then when you can go out to the olympia and have three protein bar it's fine because it yeah. all at you know it evens out at the end of the day yeah and i'm like and also like the activity level too like you just said like i my goal right now is 10 10k steps a day i'm at like 13 15 something 13, like that 16 easily. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like I'm like, all right, well, we're, we're definitely moving. burning. Yeah, we're definitely yes. burning. So that, that extra Absolutely. protein bar is not a problem, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> no big deal. No biggie. And I think that's the thing. I think people get, I think this is the other part of it. I hear this from clients too. They feel like if they're not perfect, that they're failing on it. It's like, that's not, that's not the case. Like you want to stay tight. Then you do the bucket mentality. That's yeah. the worst thing. Absolutely. <laughs>
Absolutely. You, you can't be perfect and then have a fuck it day. Like you have to find that balance. I'd rather right. this than this. That's right. <laughs> Yes, you know? absolutely. Absolutely. And like I have a girl right now that, um, you know, I've mentioned I give I give flex meals when they're on their on their period if they have cravings and stuff like that. And she did the, the flex meal incorrectly. Like she went up and over her calories. Um, and I said that this is actually not the way you're supposed to do it. I said, but I said, that being said, I said, you still dropped weight this week. So I'm not mad about it. <laughs> I was like, so, but just so you know, for the future, this is what a flex flex meal is. A flex meal is, is that you stay within your caloric range but you can eat whatever you want within that caloric range. That's the difference. You don't go yeah. up and over. Um, I said, but I said, at the, at the end of the day, I said, you still stayed. I mean, you, you're, you're on your period and you dropped weight. So I'm not mad about it, you know? So perfect um, scenario. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, you're, I'm like, you're good. And she went right back on her macro. She didn't, she didn't like go way off the next day. She just stayed right where she was supposed to be. So that extra 300 calories that she had in there didn't make a difference. It actually no probably deal. helped her. Yeah. It actually right. probably helped her. So it was fine. So that that's the kind of mentality you got to start adopting. It's like, just because you have this doesn't mean you have the fuck it mentality. You know, totally. it's, it's your body's going to absorb it. You're going to be okay. You know, things are going to be fine tomorrow, all of that kind of stuff. But you did not screw the whole thing up. You did not screw yeah. the whole thing up. So, um, and, you know, like, again, I had this conversation with one of my girls that's doing Ben Weeder. Her weight started going up this week, but that's because she just came out of a show. I'm feeding her more. Um, I said, I said, that's okay. I said, I'm not worried about your weight going up right now. I said, I'm, you know, this happened the last show you came out of too. I said, this is your body replenishing everything. It's okay. I said, we're going to pull you back down. We got plenty of time to pull you back down. I said, right now, I'm like, when I look at your physique, you don't look inflamed. You don't look like you're, you're fighting. You look fresh. I said, that's what we're looking for. There's a difference. I said, it's okay. It's fine. I said, you're going to be fine. We're going to pull you back in. You'll be good. I said, so don't freak out about things like that. Cause a lot of times, again, this is what I tell people too. When you're going into a reverse, communicate that with me so that I can see what's going on. And then I can say, yeah, we need to adjust this or we need to adjust that. But you're not doing the wrong thing. Like your body's doing what it's supposed to be doing right now. You're okay. You may think that it's doing the wrong thing because you went up two pounds, but you're, you look great. So don't worry about it. You know, you're, totally. you're, you're, your body's responding how it should be, you know? Yes. So, you know, those are things, again, this is why I made a post about this yesterday. Like communicate with your coach what you're feeling through your reverse. Because you might be totally fine. You know, and it, or you might not, you might need an, an adjustment. You might need something that, that, that changes that. So it pushes you in the right direction, but communicate that before you just go have that fuck it moment. Exactly. Totally. Yeah. But anyway, totally agree. Good place. So, Good yeah. place to, <laughs> to cut it. Right. We have, we have busy days well, today, right? Here, cheers to reverse dieting. I know. Cheers to reverse dieting and going into a new season now, now that we're going into, um, officially like the next next year of Olympia qualifications. I mean, I know that was a few weeks ago that started, but really this is where it kind of starts for the next year. Um, and yeah, it's going to, you're going to have fun with your vacation and all that stuff. So that starts out kind of start, kind of starts tomorrow. Kind of. Kind of. No, kind of. really Sunday. Let's see Sunday. <laughs> Gotta get through her. <laughs> you poor puppies. You're, they're going to miss you so much. Don't even, yeah. Mm -hmm. They are. <laughs> That's the hardest part. That's the it's hardest so part hard. about, about vacation. But all right. Well, I will um I will let you go get yourself all packed up. I'm sure you got a lot of stuff to pack to go away for a couple of weeks. That's a lot. Uh, I know I take like three bags with me just for two days. So like three different trips in one bag. So, <laughs> so hey. see. Good job. Good, good luck with that. <laughs> um, and with that, uh, guys, thank you so much for joining us for this this past year of Olympia. We're at, you know, six, like I said, 60th anniversary, 60th episode. Um, hope you guys have had a great, if you made it to the Olympia, I hope you had a great experience. If you didn't, I hope you got a chance to watch all of the fun go down on the live streams and all of that. And uh, anything else you want to say before we wrap it up? Nope. Just wanted to say thank you guys for all of your love and support. I'm behind yeah. the bikini. Um, just truly so special. And obviously we're going to keep continuing, but just wanted to say thank you to all of our followers and listeners. Yes. And I know I've said it on our lives and stuff like that too, where I've wrapped up the show, but this was your best look at the Olympia. So congratulations on that. It was super exciting to see you move up and get into the placings ranking. Um, I could have probably had you a little higher, but that's, that's me being biased. So <laughs> I think, I think some of the feedback was that too, which is, it's all good. You know, if they see it, you know, yes. you know some of them said they couldn't have made our argument for top 10 too. So that's good. That just means next year we're going to be knocking on that door. That's awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, 
guys, thank you so much for joining us. Episode 60, like, comment, subscribe, all the fun things, hit the bells, wherever they are. And for Behind the Bikini, we are out. Bye, Bye guys. guys.